Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits Lecture Number Eleven. Uh, today we are going to discuss about the high frequency model of MOSFET. So so far we have discussed the mid frequency model, wherein we have between gate and source open circuit because the gate current in a MOSFET is zero. Uh, so we have written over here VGS. Then between the drain and source we have written GM into VGS, which is a, a voltage dependent current source. And we also have RO. So these all components we have already seen. But in higher frequencies, there exist a parasitic or inter-electrode capacitances because of the MOSFET structure. So here we have drawn the cross-sectional view of an n-channel MOSFET. So here we have a p-silicon sub, I mean a p-type substrate. Then we have n plus source region, n plus drain region. Uh, then we have a gate, right? Uh, the gate material can be a polysilicon. Then we have a SiO2, which is the oxide layer. And uh, in integrated circuits, uh, when we manufacture, when we fabricate these MOSFETs, all the contacts are taken from top. So over here, we have the fourth terminal is the body or the substrate terminal. So that contact also is taken from top, right? And uh, with the sufficient application of gate to source voltage and drain to source voltage, the end channel will be formed. Now, where does the existence of capacitance comes over here? Right. So let me start by explaining that there is a capacitance between the n plus drain region and p substrate. So let me write over here uh, n plus drain and p substrate. So why does this capacitance exist in the first place? So if you remember carefully, uh, we keep on increasing the value of VDS, right? So VDS keeps on increasing. Whereas VGS, if it is greater than VT, it's fairly constant, right? The common voltage over here is the source voltage. So normally the source voltage is fixed, right? So that means when I say VDS is increasing, my drain voltage is increasing, correct? And over here, the drain voltage, we apply a positive potential, right? So drain voltage is applied a positive voltage and drain is uh, actually N plus region. So you are applying a positive voltage, more and more positive voltage to N plus drain. And uh, the body terminal is connected or the substrate is normally connected uh, to the ground for an NMOS transistor, right? So body terminal is connected to the normally to the ground. So it is also a fixed voltage. It is at a lower potential. So that is connected to the ground. So what really happens is as we keep on increasing the value of VDS, your drain to, I mean, your N plus drain and your substrate will become more and more reverse bias, right? And there exists the concept of the capacitance. We know capacitance will be given by dq by dv. So as there is a change in the drain to source voltage, there will be a change in the charge and that will result in a reverse bias junction capacitance, right? So this is uh, CDB is my CDB is my reverse bias. Uh, N plus drain P substrate junction capacitance. Okay, fine. So this was about your CDB. Now let's talk about the overlap capacitance. So if you see carefully, your gate is slightly overlapping with the N plus source region over here on the left hand side. And it is also overlapping with the drain region over here. And uh, there exists these two capacitance CGSO and uh, CGDO. So O stands for overlap capacitance. So why does it exist? Now, if you look carefully, uh, this is a polysilicon, right? This is the polysilicon. And below we have a N plus region, right? N plus drain and source region. And in between we have a insulator in the form of SiO2 layer. And that is what we want for a capacitor. Capacitor is a two plate, right? Positively charged and negative, negative plate, right? And in between that, you will have a uh, SiO2 layer. So this is exactly what is precisely happening. Due to the overlap between the drain and the gate and the, uh, and the gate and the source, we'll have the existence of this CGSO and CGDO, right? So the CGSO and C, uh, CGDO are called as overlap capacitances. Now, these capacitances are in picofarad range. Also, the drain to substrate junction capacitance, I should write over here, junction capacitance are also in the range of picofarads only, right? So let me write over here picofarad, okay? So we talked about CDB, uh, CGSO, and CGDO. 
these are overlap capacitances and drain to substrate junction capacitance right now there exist two more capacitances which are there over here right now that depends upon the uh, you know the gate interaction with the channel right so channel is not always connected between the n plus source and the drain region it depends upon the application of vgs and the vds voltages right so there exist two more capacitances one between the uh, gate and the n side of the i mean uh, near the n channel near the source region and another capacitor cgd will exist between the gate and the drain side of the n channel so these capacitors cgs and cgd are called as inter electrode or parasitic capacitances whose values are also in the range of picofarad okay so these capacitances will represent the interaction of the gate and the channel inversion layer this n channel is also called as inversion layer okay because you are creating a n channel inside a p substrate so let me write over here this is inversion layer so because of the interaction between the gate and the inversion layer you will have two more capacitances present so depending upon the operating region on which the mosfet is operating so let's say it's operating in the cutoff so during the cutoff the channel is not formed so these capacitances will not be there during the saturation there will be no channel existing near the drain end so cgd won't exist it will be zero and uh, during the uh, normal uh, you know we can say linear or uh, yeah triad region of operation you can say that both cgs and cgd will be present so it depends upon the interaction uh, and uh, uh, you know operating region of the mosfet right but these capacitances all of them will be active only at higher frequencies now why they will be active only at higher frequencies if you see all these uh, xc will be given by 1 upon 2 pi fc okay now here the capacitors are in picofarad okay capacitors are in picofarad and let's say that your frequency is low frequency around 100 hertz now this xc will become very very high infinite almost almost will be a very high value so that's why these capacitor reactance offered by these capacitors will be almost open circuit right also at mid frequency also it will be the same let's say mid frequency around 50 kilohertz still the same story is there but the but the entire scenario will change as soon as the frequency is greater than you know a very high frequency let's say greater than uh, 100 megahertz so when this becomes 100 megahertz then this xc is no longer a very high value it's a moderate value that's why we have to consider these parasitic capacitances at extremely high frequencies now you will say ki what will happen if you go to a much higher and higher frequency so as you go on increasing your frequency your xc that is the reactance offered by this parasitic capacitances will keep on decreasing right and at extremely high frequencies all these capacitors will behave as a short circuit right and that is the reason why the gain of the amplifier falls at higher frequencies due to this interconnect and parasitic capacitances okay so now we have identified these five capacitances cgso cgdo cgs cgd and cdb right so all of that all of those capacitances will add in the uh, you know model and this becomes the high frequency model of the mosfet n channel mosfet so between the gate and the drain there is cgd cgdo and between the gate and the source we have cgs and cgso and between the drain and the substrate which is normally connected to the ground substrate so we can have a capacitor between the drain and the ground which is cdb okay so we also know that whenever two capacitances are connected in parallel uh, we can add their uh, you know final result can be added together right so instead of having the showing this two capacitances in parallel we'll just write as cgd a uh, parasitic capacitance connected between the gate and the drain terminal and cgs again a parasitic capacitance connected between the gate and the source terminal okay and there will be one more capacitance cdb connected between the drain and the ground or the substrate terminal so this becomes my high frequency model of n channel mosfet this is very very important i have marked the capacitances in red so at mid frequencies they won't be present they will be open circuited okay so if you open circuit all these capacitances this will become a mid frequency model but for high frequencies we have to consider the capacitance 
because their reactances are no longer very very high fine so with this knowledge of high frequency model of a mos and mosfet let's analyze the high frequency response of a mosfet amplifier so yeah let me show you the circuit over here now this is the mosfet amplifier which we have analyzed at mid frequencies before right so all these capacitances i have shown here inter electrode capacitances there are also wiring capacitances which whose concepts was discussed in the while discussing the bjd amplifier right i have told you all the significance and the origin of these wiring capacitances cwi right at the input side of the uh, of the amplifier and cwo so cwi and cwo are also in the range of pico uh, pico farads uh, then we have this three paras inter electrode capacitances cgd cgs and cdb rest the entire circuit remains the same as the mid frequency model so we have a input source with a internal resistance r6 then we have input coupling capacitor cc1 output coupling capacitor cc2 bypass capacitor cs and here we have used the voltage divider network okay r1 r2 is the uh, voltage divider resistance and here we have rd let me change it to rd and this is my source resistance rs right and at the output we have connected the load a resistive load rl remember we have a vdd in the form of a dc voltage so uh, vs is a small signal ac right and v out is my amplified ac which is there so here we have shown the all the uh, you know parasitic and the wiring capacitances so that we can analyze this circuit further so here in a brief cc1 cc2 and cs are the externally connected capacitors their values are in microfarad and cgs cgd and cdb are my parasitic capacitances or inter electrode capacitances then cwi and cwo are wiring capacitances their value is in picofarad okay so if the frequency is very very high as we have discussed before the reactance of our body's capacitances will become a moderate value which cannot be ignored now we have also seen a concept that uh, this is my frequency response of a typical a uh, bjt amplifier we have seen before same is the frequency response for a mosfet amplifier right so we have three regions over here defined low frequency region mid frequency region and a high frequency region so as you can see in the mid frequency the gain remains constant at low frequency the gain is falling right and also at higher frequencies the gain is falling down so we have a lower cut off frequency in the form of fl higher cut off frequency in the form of fh and uh, here the bandwidth will be given by fh approximately fh because your lower cut off frequency will be very very small as compared to fh right and uh, here we have already discussed this before that why does the gain of the amplifier fall at low frequency they fall at low frequency due to the externally connected capacitors cc1 cc2 and cs and the next part is why does the gain of the amplifier fall at high frequency now the gain of the amplifier fall at high frequency due to the existence of parasitic and stray capacitances due to the mosfet structure itself so these are cgs cgd cdb and the wiring capacitance cwi and cwo right so we will analyze this circuit uh, further now to see that how does the gain will be affected at higher frequencies so let's start with the analysis so we'll draw first the high frequency equivalent circuit so for high frequency the connected capacitors cc1 cc2 and cs are behaving as short circuit but all the stray and the parasitic capacitors will remain in the circuit as it is right so let's start building the circuit so here we will replace the mosfet with its high frequency model with all the parasitic and the wiring capacitances intact so there are total 1 2 3 4 5 five parasitic and wiring capacitances in the circuit which will be connecting okay and uh, since it is a high frequency small signal equivalent circuit uh, here we are this can i mean we are short circuiting the dc power supply we are not changing at all we are only considering the small signal time varying uh, quantities right and also the coupling capacitor cc1 cc2 and cs will be short circuited okay so let's do that over here the vdd the vdd will be connected to the 
Okay, let me just directly do it over here. So first of all, we'll draw the high frequency model of the MOSFET. So we have a uh, gate, drain, and source. Now the bypass capacitor CS is actually short circuited, right? So let me do it here itself. The bypass capacitor CS is short circuited. Then the input coupling capacitor CC1 is short circuited. The output coupling capacitor CC2 is also short circuited. And here the VDD supply, it's also connected to the ground. Okay. So this one is also connected to the ground. Okay. So that means your register R1, one of the terminals and register RD, one of the terminals will be connected to the ground. Now for this circuit, we have to build our high frequency equivalent AC equivalent circuit, right? So we start with gate, drain and source. The source terminal will be connected to the ground. Between the gate and source, we have open circuit VGS. Between the drain and source, we have GM VGS current source and RO, right? Now let's see what happens at the gate terminal. So at the gate terminal, we have uh, two registers R1 parallel to R2. Then we have RSIG and VS. We also have CWI, right? And uh, we also have CGS. So these are the components we'll have. We'll now draw in the high frequency model. So between the gate and the ground, we have CGS because its source is also grounded. CWI, which is the input winding capacitance, R1 parallel to R2, RSIG and VS. So that completes the gate to source side of the circuit, which is the input side. And over here from the drain side, let's see what do we have. From the drain terminal, we have RD, which is going to the ground. We have CDB, CWO, RL, which is also connected to the ground and output over here. So that's what we draw over here. CDB, CWO, RD, and in parallel to RL. And that's how we saw over here V out. So in this case, since it is representing a uh, you know, high frequency, small signal equivalent circuit. This is representing small AC variations. So your uh, VS is AC and your output is also AC. Okay. Again, I repeat, whenever we draw the high frequency model, we are attempting to linearize the non-linear MOSFET device, right? Now, next, uh, there is a capacitance connected between the gate terminal and the drain terminal. So that is effectively a feedback capacitance. A, ca a capacitor connecting the input to the output is a feedback capacitor. So if you do the analysis uh, as it is, keeping this feedback capacitor as it is in its place, then the analysis will become quite difficult. So for this, we will use a concept which is called as Miller effect. So what does the Miller effect says? That if you have an inverting amplifier, right? And if there is a capacitor, feedback capacitor connected between the input and the uh, output terminals, then what we will do, we can millerize this capacitance. So we can millerize this capacitance, connecting it to the input terminals, CMI, and we can connect it to the output terminal, CMO. Where your CMI will be given by one minus uh, AV into CF, right? Where CF is my feedback capacitance and AV is my voltage gain, okay? CMO will be given by one minus one upon AV into CF. That is a feedback capacitance. So we'll use this uh, CMI and CMO are input Miller capacitance and Miller, uh, you know, uh, output Miller capacitance, right? So your feedback capacitance is decomposed into two capacitance, one at the input terminals and one at the output terminals. You have already proved this uh, CMI and CMO results, okay? Now let's go back to the circuit and let's millerize uh, this feedback capacitor CGD into CMI and CMO. So we say in the next step, we will millerize CGD into the input Miller capacitance CMI and the output Miller capacitance CMO. So we can replace this CGD by CMI connected at the input side and CMO connected at the output side. So let's do that. So here it is, this is my CMI and CMO. So your CGD is decom it's composed into two parts now, one at the input side, we have input Miller capacitance CMI and at the output side, we have output Miller capacitance CMO. Now, what we can do is, now since there are three capacitances, which are connected in parallel, so we can have, we know that the resultant combination will be the addition, right? So that means CI will be 
सी एम आई प्लस सी डब्ल्यू आई प्लस सी जी एस राइट सो सी आई वी कैन वी कैन क्लब डेम टूगेदर एंड वी कैन कॉल इट एज सी आई राइट वन सिंगल कैपेसिटेंस सो विच वी कैन कॉल इट एज अ इनपुट साइड पैरासिटिक कैपेसिटेंस राइट वेर सी एम आई फॉर्मूला विल बी गिवन बाय सी जी डी इन टू वन माइनस ए वी ओके and also at the output side we can combine these three capacitances cg uh, cdb and cwo and cmo so we know that they are in parallel so the resultant combination co will be given by cdb plus cwo plus cmo right where your output miller capacitance cmo will be given by cgd into 1 minus 1 upon av so where co is called as output side parasitic capacitance okay understood so now our diagram will be very much simplified so let's draw the simplified diagram over here now let me start by drawing the gate and the source so here we have the gate that's the drain terminal and that's the source terminal right so we know that the source terminal is directly connected to the this is gate and this is drain okay so between the gate and source we have vgs between the drain and source we have the current source voltage dependent current source so we can call it as gm into vgs then we have ro okay then we have small ro connected right so this is my uh, you know the model of the mosfet now we have to represent all these capacitances so over here this c capacitance can be replaced by co so let's do that and then we have in parallel rd and rl so let's draw the diagram over here so here it will be replaced by r uh, we have a capacitor over here which will be this source source terminal will be connected to the ground then we have a capacitor in the form of co then in parallel we have r d and r l okay so here we have a drain resistance r d and here we have a load resistance r l and here is the output okay across the load so it is plus minus v out okay so that completes the drain to the source side of the circuit and next at the at the gate side to source we have uh, a single capacitance ci then we have r1 parallel to r2 and r sig okay so this will be your vs so let me show it to you over here uh we will have a capacitor connected over here let me connect r6 this is r6 then we will have r1 parallel to r2 so this will be r1 parallel to r2 and we'll have a input side parasitic capacitance given by c i okay and this will be my r6 and then we have connected over here the voltage source ac voltage source this is plus minus vs so this is how the diagram will look like now okay let me just slightly drag it above so the diagram becomes very much simplified now now over here we have input side of the circuit so we have two sections in the circuit now so this section is called as this section is called as input side this is input side and over here from drain to source we have this is output side okay and at the input side we have a, a parasitic capacitance ci input parasitic capacitance ci and the output side we have a, a output parasitic capacitance co so basically for the input circuit input side circuit and the output side circuit there will be two different cut off frequencies okay let me see the number over here three okay fine so that means since there are two capacitances there will be two higher cut off frequencies so let me add over here point number 3 we have to find we have to evaluate the fhi that is the for the input side circuit so let's consider the input side circuit so for the input side circuit we have to calculate f h i okay the higher cut off frequency of the input side circuit so what we will do we will consider the same model but we have to short circuit 
over here, we'll write down over here. You have to consider the entire circuit as it is, but the requirement is that we have to sort circuit. We'll consider one capacitance at a time, right? When we consider CI, we'll sort circuit CO, and when we'll consider CO, we'll sort circuit CI. So for considering the input side circuit, for calculating FHI due to CI, we will sort circuit uh, CO and also, okay, sort circuit CO and VS. We sort circuit CO and VS and we'll consider, and we'll consider CI in the circuit, okay? So we'll do that. Let me copy this uh, circuit uh, once so that I can mark it clearly. Okay. Okay, fine. Y'all can draw this in your books once more or else just observe it once. So here I have added the circuit, right? Let me just delete this wire. It is not necessary. So what did we say? We have to sort circuit the... Uh, CO capacitance. So let's do that. So we'll short circuit CO. In, instead of CO, we'll replace it with a wire. Also, we short circuit D VS part. Okay, the input source VS. Now, if you look carefully over here into the circuit, uh, the what is the impedance offered by the current source GM into VGS? So the impedance offered by this current source GM into VGS is infinite. So impedance offered by this current source will be infinite. That means this will behave as an open circuit. The GM VGS current source will behave as an open circuit. Now, one more thing. Since we have a sort connected between the drain and the source terminal, the registers RD, RL, and RO will become redundant. So as good as saying that drain to source side circuit is completely gone, right? Drain to source side of the circuit is completely gone because uh, GM VGS is open circuit. And all the things are over here are short circuited over here. RO, RL, and RD, right? So we have left out with a very I mean, simplified circuit now. Let me draw that again once. So you all have to draw that again. I will be doing it this way. So we have left out with such a circuit, right? And for the circuit, we have to calculate the value of uh, FHI, right? So if you if you see carefully over here, uh, this can be represented in the following form. So let's say that you have, a, let me draw it over here. We'll have a capacitor like this. And then you, uh, I mean, register and a capacitor connected like this. And that is connected to a system. So let me draw a system over here. And this will, this, let's say this is R1. This is C1. Okay. R1 and C1. And what do we have over here? We have input, let's say input applied. Okay, so when we have such a system, we can write the cutoff frequency as, let's say F1 will be equal to one upon two pi R1 into C1. And how will be the frequency response of such a system looks like? The frequency response of such a system will look like this. So over here, we'll have gain AV. Here we'll have a frequency. And how does the frequency response look like? The frequency response looks like this. So the gain will drop at a higher cutoff frequency. So let me mark that point over here. Okay. So this point will be F1. Right. There's a higher cutoff frequency. So we have analyzed this circuit in a very second lecture of analog electronic circuit. So you can refer that. Right. So similarly, this is the system which we are talking about. Correct. So uh, right now, what we can say is we want to calculate, I mean, uh, that's the system which we are talking about. So even if we interchange R1 and R2 and CI, it won't matter. So let me do that quickly. So we'll interchange uh, over here these two. So here we will write CI. Here we'll write CI. And here we can add a capacitor uh, register R1 parallel to R2. They are in parallel, right? R1 parallel to R2, right? So this system which we are talking about, we have to, we can calculate the RI of the system. This is the RI looking into the system, right? So our system is this. 
right? We have R sig, we have C i, and then we have R one parallel to R two. So we have to calculate over here R i, right? Looking into the system. So very easily you can easily write the R i value. So the R i value will be R one parallel to R two, right? And uh, now what will be the R equivalent? I mean, if you want to calculate R equivalent. R equivalent is the uh, the uh, the resistance seen by this offered by I mean seen by this capacitor, right? So what will be that? That will be R sig because R sig will be connected to the ground, right? Parallel to R one, parallel to R R two because right now they are connect connected in parallel, right? On the left hand side we have R sig and on the right hand side we have R one parallel to R two. So we can write R equivalent will be given by R sig. Parallel to R I, where R I is R one, parallel to R two. Now we can write the higher cutoff frequency as uh, given by F H I will be given by one upon two pi R equivalent into C I. So that's the formula for the higher cutoff frequency for the input side circuit. So let me put it inside the box. So we can write where. Uh, what is the C I value? We have written the earlier C I value. C I is the input side capacitor, where C I value will be given by C M I plus C W O I plus C G S, right? Where C M I will be given by C G D into one minus A V. So we can write this down over here. That F H I is one upon two pi R equivalent into C I, where R equivalent can be found out like this: R C parallel to R one parallel to R Oh, okay. So we can write over here where your C I will be given by C M I input Miller capacitance, input wiring capacitance C W O plus parasitic capacitance between gate and source C G S, right? And over here we have the formula for the input Miller capacitance C M I will be given by C G D the feedback capacitor. Into one minus A V. So uh, we have to use these formulas to calculate the higher cutoff frequency for the input side circuit. Okay, correct. Any any doubts over here? So basically, this will become my. If I calculate this, this will become my F H I. Okay, at a higher cutoff frequency. I hope this point is clear. Fine. So now let me. Uh, Just copy this part so that I can start with output side circuit. Okay, I will calculate output side circuit now. Let me do that. Immediately, I will be doing that. F H I inputs F H I is the higher cutoff frequency of the input side circuit. Now let's evaluate the output side of the circuit. So I will be doing some changes over here. So please bear with me. This is uh, fourth actually, and that will be the output side circuit. This will be F H O, and we have to short circuit C I. Okay, so we'll do that now. This is fourth point. This is output side circuit, and uh, sorry for that. Let me write properly. This is output side circuit. We have connected. I mean, we are evaluating F H O, the higher cutoff frequency at the output side circuit, and then we will short circuit over here C I and C S and consider C O alone. Okay. So first, let me put back the value of C O so that we can analyze it. So C O is the output. Side parasitic capacitor, okay, and we have to short circuit over here C I value. So C I value have to be short circuited like this, okay, and uh, we we have sorted V S also. So we know that uh, the current I mean the current source G M into V G S will offer infinite impedance, so it will be acting as open circuit. Now since the gate to source terminal over here C I is short circuited, R one parallel to R two will be redundant. Same is the case with R six, because all of them are in parallel. So.
So if a sort is in parallel with registers, those everything will become redundant. It will become a short circuit. Also, here at the gate to source, we have open circuit. So this entire circuit on the left hand side is gone. Okay. And also the current source is open circuited. So we have left out with such a circuit. Let me draw that once more. So we have left out with a part of a circuit, which we have to analyze to find the value of F H O. So I'll draw that circuit now. Yeah. So we have over here open circuit like this. Okay. And that thing is gone. And that is normally connected to the ground. So now we have to analyze such a circuit. Fine. Now you can again uh, represent this in the in the following form. So you will have a capacitor. We will have a register over here. Then you will have a capacitor over here, and then you will have a system. Okay. In this case, our system is on the. Let me redraw it. In our case, we have this capacitor connected over here. Okay, this is C O, and we have a resistance over here. This is my output basically. And then on this side, we have the system. So here is the system. Okay, so for from this system, we have to calculate R O. We have to calculate R O. Uh, this will be basically uh, we can say this is R. Let's say R one. Okay, and this is C one. Let's consider this is a C one. So if we have such a system, uh, what will be the cutoff frequency given by F one? Cutoff frequency will be given by one upon two pi R one into C one. And how will the frequency response look like for such a RC circuit? It will look something like this. So it will behave like this. Higher cutoff frequencies, it will fall. The gain will fall down. Okay, this is F versus AV. And uh, this cutoff frequency, let me mark over here. This is F one. Okay. So similar to this over here, in our case, we have a system which is formed. uh this is the system which we are talking about i mean what we can do is we can keep co over here as it is and i mean we can represent that uh, properly no problem at all but uh here in this case if you want to properly represent what we were conscious what we were actually uh, you know trying to tell so in this case what will be your r equivalent i mean what will be your r equivalent over here directly you can tell from here it will be ro parallel to rd parallel to rl okay the impedance seen by this capacitance co will be ro right ro parallel to rd and again in parallel to rl so this will be my equivalent resistance right and then uh, how can i write the formula so formula fho will be written by fho will be given by 1 upon 2 pi into r equivalent into co okay let me rewrite this co so that is will put inside the box so to calculate the higher cut off frequency for the output circuit we will be using such a formula okay we will be using this formula and uh, here we can write where the output side capacitance co will be given by cmo plus cwo plus cdb okay we have seen this before right in our equivalent circuit and here the input miller capacitance cmo formula will be given by cgd into 1 minus 1 upon av okay so cg cgd into 1 minus 1 upon av so this is how we can calculate the higher cut off frequency of the output side fine uh next what we will do is we will analyze i mean we have to find out in the next step 
the higher cutoff frequency of the entire circuit. We have found out FHI and FHO. So now we have to decide which is the higher cutoff frequency for the circuit. So we'll write over here um, estimation of FH. Estimation of FH. Okay. So what will be FH now? We have two cutoff frequencies, uh, F, higher cutoff frequency, FHI and FHO. Right. So your final, high, you know, your overall higher cutoff frequency will be minimum of, will be minimum of FHI, comma, FHO. Okay. So we have, when we have a two higher cutoff frequency, FHI and FHO, whichever is the lowest value that will become my FH. Is that point clear? So this FH is nothing but my higher cutoff frequency. This FH is my higher cutoff frequency of the amplifier, of the MOSFET amplifier. Okay. And uh, basically the mid frequency response we have already analyzed in the, when we discussed the low frequency, right? Low frequency response. So we have to continue this further. Uh, I mean, when, when we saw a numerical on finding the higher cutoff frequency, all the other steps remain the same. The low frequency and the mid frequency analysis remains the same. But this is how we estimate the higher cutoff frequency for a MOSFET amplifier. So if you all have doubts, we will wait or else we will, that will be all for the lecture. Okay. So if you all are given the values, the parasitic capacitance values and the wiring capacitance values, we have to find the higher cutoff frequency in the following manner. Fine. So if, if you have any queries, you can ask or else that will be all for this session. And next time we will solve a numerical on the higher cutoff frequency for finding the higher cutoff frequency for a MOSFET amplifier. So until then, have a good day and thank you.